graduating. My name is Bailey Durant and this is my 2015 BMW M4. The one thing that these M4s have, which I'm on stock wheels, but stock wheels they insert so much and today we're going to be doing install with spacers. An average person would probably run 15 millimeters in the front, 12 millimeters in the rear from what I'm understanding when I'm reading all these forums. And uh, some people do 20-20 squared, which I think that would just be too aggressive. I don't know if I'd be able to air out at all and, or roll the fenders enough to do that. So what I decided to go with was 18 millimeter in the front, 15 millimeter in the rear. I think it's gonna give that perfect poke on the outside and I should be able to air it out close. And if I can't air out at all, then I'm just gonna go roll the fenders because I want to air out completely, but it's gonna be super aggressive. These fenders I don't care so much about and that's why I went a little bit more aggressive than an average person on bags. Again, it would probably look really good with lowering springs or coilovers. I doubt you'd rub at all, but let's go ahead and throw these bad boys on and see how aggressive it really is. I went with the Burger Motorsports, as you can see, 15 millimeters for the rear, 18 millimeters in the front. I have a torque wrench here, I have an impact, and then I have my jack. That should be all that you need for this install. Now, wheel spacers, when you do this, you need to have studs that are capable of the spacers that you're doing or you need to get extended lugs to match those spacers because then your bolts won't be threaded enough on your wheel and you can lose your wheel which makes spacers very unsafe and it is really windy out here if it's messing with the footage i truly apologize but I, i'm impatient i have to do this today Could it be? It's just the seals. I love working on cars, but sometimes it's really hard to stay positive. The jack is completely broken. I've had broken jacks in the past. Normally you can see where the hydraulic has failed. This you can't. There's no fluid or anything, but it won't pump up the weight of the vehicle. I'm gonna go Harbor Freight. You know, that was a Harbor Freight jack. And I'm gonna probably buy the lightweight aluminum one. And I'm probably gonna buy the warranty on it. 320i headed to Harbor Freight for a new jack, boys. Believe it or not, this is my second monster today. I really need to chill out. The jack I went with this time is a little bit more than my traditional steel one. It is aluminum. I chose to go with aluminum just because I have to carry it up and down away over there all the time. Plus, I'm getting a house. I'd rather have something a little bit lighter and a little bit neater because I plan on having a pretty professional garage. At least I have a vision in my head. I want to make a really cool garage. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Now something I want to point out if you're doing this with your BMW is while your jack points are right here and they're a little bit of plasticky, there they are, that's your jack point. It's made out of plastic and normally you have a puck that goes up in there and then you use the jack. Well, I had those and for some reason they have disappeared. I don't know if I left them at a shop, I, I don't know. Either way, they're gone, I'm going to order some new ones. Thankfully with a certain type of jack with a flat like a uh, bowl here like even if it didn't have the pad you'd be able to do it without damaging that plastic but i like how this one has the rubber because technically i don't need the puck at all now put that where it needs to be remember we're doing the 18 millimeters in the front with the bmw m4 
in the spacers here are the new bolts. It comes with new bolts, which I plan on replacing this with studs pretty soon. They come with bolts because you can see how these are the old ones that go all the way through the threads. You can see there's not very much thread. Here's the new ones. You need new ones. If yours don't come with it, you need new ones because they're much longer and you need to make sure you have those threads. Since I have the wheel off, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the brake caliper. I'm also gonna clean the inner wheel because it's a lot of work to do this. You might as well take the extra step to make sure everything looks a little bit better. It makes me feel better about the whole job that I did. <laughs> It's cool because Burger Tuning didn't only provide the bolts, they also provide this tool. And it says Burger Tuning on it. What you do with this tool, and the whole purpose of this tool is to align everything to make it easier to do the wheel install with the spacer. So we'll go ahead and thread that in. Then we'll go ahead and grab the spacer and an 18 millimeter. You can also see it has this board here so it sticks out and supports the inner wheel. Another thing I appreciate about these spacers is once you do try to take them off, they usually get stuck. You can see there it has these little spots so you can get a screwdriver and pry it off. Really loving this. Hi right, guys, you gotta check this out. So this is ride height. If you're on lowering springs or corridors, you're probably sitting up higher than my airlift. But you can see this fitment. Looks so much better. Look at that. So you see how it comes out of the bumper. And then this side, it's like, what the heck is going on? The front is what the best is what really needs. Once you get all the spacers on, you got the car lowered. Obviously, I only impacted it. You need to torque the wheels to spin. So, my car's 140 newton meters. If you're doing this on a different vehicle, make sure you check before doing it. But I have it ready, so I'm gonna go ahead and torque everything down. You see how much better it looks. It kind of looks like an aftermarket wheel style now. The fitment is so much better. The rear fitment is so much better. I we decided to go on a little drive while she's doing homework and get some photos. And this is also me in the video. And here it is aired out. It looks so much better. It's probably hard to tell on camera, but this fitment is great. Like it's actually touching right there. We could, if I could redo it, I would do 20 millimeters all the way around. And I'd probably roll it a little bit. That's me. And I just want to go a little bit extra, but if you want to be safe, and it's not going to break anything. You don't need to cut anything definitely do this setup and if you do 18 in the rear also like I did 18 in the front it's probably gonna rub so but look at that front fitment though 